My dad was a storyteller. He would share every story with joy, excitement, suspense, exhilaration. And I picked up on that with my imagination. One of the stories he used to tell was going offshore fishing with his friend A.B. John, fishing the shipwrecks of North Carolina. He would get so excited because he would go into detail about how he'd drop his bait down, his live bait, really heavy weighted sinker on the bottom and as soon as it hit the bottom you better be yanking up because there's a fish on. As a kid I, I would listen to his stories and create my own worlds and one of those worlds was always a, a place where I wanted to go one day and experience that same feeling of I better yank that rod because there's a fish. This is day one with my new boat. And I ended up going 26 miles offshore. Part of me said, don't be crazy. Be careful, be safe. Make it a good decision. Fish stuff closer. Get a feel for the boat. And the other part of me, <laughs> the other part of me said, send it. So this is day one full of lessons. And I can't wait to share that with you. Let's get to fishing. Morning, guys. I am actually looking for bait now. My plan is to go offshore today and do some bottom fishing. And it's imperative that I find good bait. So if it takes me an hour to find good bait, I'm gonna have to just take the time to do it because the key to catching bottom fish is having good quality live bait. So right now what I'm doing is, is riding through the creeks and I'm looking for any disturbances on the surface. It's glass this morning, so it's, it's pretty easy to see off into the distance if there's some type of activity. What I want is menhaden. I will take mullet if I have to. And then the plan would be get some mullet in here just in case and then go out in the ocean and ride the beach a little bit and try to find a pod. I know there has been some mullet pushing in because it's just getting to be that time of year. So I'm hopeful that we're going to get some good bait. So we're just going to cruise right now and try to find some. All right, y'all, we just got anchored up on the ledge. Probably going to lose this anchor, but we're learning. So we're going to see what happens when we start dropping down. There we go. There's a fish. There's a fish. Winching it up. Let's see what we got. No, he came off. Gosh. Oh, that was a good fish. Man, that was powerful. He just came undone. Okay. Well, I know we're in a good spot. No, fuck! Jesus! Mm. That fish broke off a 100 pound mono. I don't know what else I can do any different there. 
no telling what it was. It broke it off like at the jig where it actually loop knots to the jig. It broke the loop knot off. So clearly I ain't got enough power for whatever that was. So we're gonna drop back down. I got the same jig. I do have two of that one. So I'm gonna drop that one down and see if I can get another hit with it. But this stuff ain't, uh, <laughs> this ain't inshore fishing. These fish don't play games. Dude, I keep getting whooped by these fish. Take it. Take it. I got this one. Come here. Come here. Oh, come on. I just want one. Oh. Yes! Let's go! I think he's short, but... Oh. Oh. oh, man, that's awesome. I think he's a little short. Ah! Come on, baby. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on. Come on. Give up. Come on. Come on. Alright, where am I set leader? That's leader. What do we got here? The big Amica. Woo! Yeah. That's a big one, okay. Alright. I ain't caught one of them today. Okay. Keep a little bit Woo! Oh! Oh, oh man. This ain't no joke, y'all. That's an Almaca going back. Oh, well, I didn't expect a span. I didn't expect a Spanish out here, especially jigging it off the bottom like that. All right, that's a nice one too. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh God, oh God. Oh man, why does that keep happening? Why does that keep happening?
I just hit it on the way up. Spanish? <laughs> oh, that's cr I, just, I just don't understand. This fish is so hard to catch. Spanish hit it on the way up. Alright, buddy. Pound. What we got? What we got? Another Elmica. Another Elmica. Grouper. That's a stomach looking. Same old look in here. Come on, buddy. Oh, we're good. These are right here. I might as well cast, right? There we go. <laughs> he smashed it. He smashed it. They're following them. They're following them. I'm gonna look at and lock the drag down on this guy. Wear him out real quick. Oh. Under the boat. Digging, digging, digging. Oh, he tail wrapped. Okay. Oh, no, he's not. That's funny. Good bait. I ain't never seen one of them. What you think, G? That ain't worth waking up, is it? That ain't worth waking up. So this trip was all about learning, and I always try to make it a point to keep you guys in the loop on what it's like for me to figure out a new experience or to learn from my mistakes and share them with you so that you can possibly not spend the money to make the same mistakes. But our lesson one was anchoring. I thought that I'd be able to pull the anchor off of the, the edge of the ledge without needing a, uh, a float ball, but I lost the anchor on the first drop. I got hooked under some rocks, and that was that. $100 mistake. So uh, I am going to get a float ball while I'm waiting to get a trolling motor. The next thing I learned was I got to have reels with low gear because these fish, if you don't get them off of the bottom, that, that first five foot is crucial. 
I lost fish after fish after fish. I lost two other fish that weren't on camera. And that leads me to my third point, how much harder it is to film when I'm working with fish that give me zero room for error. So for example, if I'm not rolling at all times, then I'm not gonna capture it because it happens so fast. So that's something I have to work on. The fourth thing was I have to have heavier heavier gear, not only the reel, but the, the rigs that I'm using, the mono. I gotta have heavier mono. I broke 100 pound mono. I broke 80 pound mono. I'm gonna switch to 130 for my rigs and I don't know what I'm gonna do about the jig rod. That could have been a shark, but it broke 100 pound mono. What am I gonna do? Um, and lastly, how much harder it is to actually catch the fish because you have to be right on top of the fish. In the end, you can kind of see that I started getting right on top of the areas that I wanted to fish and I would actually ride the line with the bail open and I would ease off of the spot and I'd slowly let out line while keeping tension on it so that I could feel when a fish actually hit it. That's the only way I started catching fish. I also realized that you can't just muscle these fish up. So what I started doing was reeling down the rod and then lifting with my legs, reeling down, lifting with my legs, reeling down, lifting with my legs. You can see it in the last few fish that I caught. That's what I did. I started laying in fish. So technique is just as important on that. Uh, I, I'm, I'm going to catch more fish next time I go because I've learned so much on just one trip. Uh, also the, the importance of bait. I only had small finger mullets. So I'm just going to take all of this and try to continue to grow. But I appreciate you guys uh, watching the, the video, the being subscribed to the channel. Uh, you guys are awesome. Shout out to Matthew um, Thomas Nethercut. He uh, actually gave me the first rod and reel that you guys saw. But um, I got to step that reel up, dude. I appreciate it. The rod worked great, though. And if I can help you guys with any real estate, my contact information is down below. But uh, we're going to get back out there. We're going to get back to it. I appreciate you guys. Y'all have a good day.